Good evening, good evening, everybody, and thank you for attending our first educational um, community outreach program. My name is Stephen Katsados, and I'm the Director of Health and Code Enforcement for the City of McAllen. Before we get started, I'd like to make some special introductions. We have two City Commissioners with us, Joaquin Zamora and Sebi Haddad. Thank you for coming to our meeting. I also want to thank Delinda Gonzalez Alcantar, the CEO of the Boys and Girls Club, for allowing us to be here tonight. Um, everything we do is to build trust and confidence with our residents, and we're happy that you are all here today to learn about our city departments and our city services. We want to engage each one of you, each and every one of you, in keeping our city beautiful one neighborhood at a time. Our mission is to maintain a quality of life and preserve the integrity of properties and neighborhoods in our community through education and enforcement of codes. Tonight we, talk, we will talk about code enforcement, building inspections, recycling, brush, keep McCown beautiful, affordable homes, and our stormwater ordinance. Um, this session is geared towards education. If you have any specific concerns, you can see us after the session uh, and we can answer your questions. Okay, first we're going to uh, do our top 10 code violations and we're gonna have Cindy and RC from our department um, go through our top 10 code violations. I can reach. Okay, the first slide is going to talk about the concerns received, of course, when I use the 311 uh, call center, and um, or, or you know, we can also uh, have. We just like complaints by uh, you know, email. Uh, we have it on, the, on our city uh, website and post complaints. So we also have a standby, of course, we work throughout the day. We also have a standby person that works after hours. It could be you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, and uh, uh, they'll be addressing uh, you also your complaints. Um, see the next right But that one's a great app, the 301 app. It's good to download. You can also upload a photo, which is uh, when they come in. Uh, as management, we end up getting uh, the pictures with the with the complaint on it. So that's a real good tool to to have and download. Not just our department, but other uh, of course other city departments too. So if you don't have it, please download it on your phone, and uh, it's a real good uh, tool to have. Okay, we have uh, court enforcement areas. Um, we have some that are retiring and and stuff. So that, that's uh, we just hired four more. As we all know, the city is growing. Uh, departments are growing. We're growing. Uh, we just came up with a zoning team because we are getting the commercial properties too. And um, so, let me see what the um, second start singing at. <laughs> okay, the code officers areas. Uh, officers are rotated through districts. Uh, officers work nights, uh, tw uh, shift twice a, a month uh, on weekends. Also, officers uh, are scheduled to uh, cover sunshine, sunset, like I mentioned, uh, the night uh, inspectors. Uh, one officer is on standby uh, during the evening uh, working hours. This is also for the food inspector, so it's not just the court officer, it's also food inspector. Uh, they go out if there's a, a fire at the restaurant and stuff, they'll go and, and um, follow uh, the fire department. Um, the court enforcement division, which would be RC uh, and I, uh, two court enforcement uh, supervisors, and we have 13 certified Code enforcement uh, officers plus five additional staff and training. Uh, so the certified code enforcement officers uh, enforce all up to city, uh, state, city and state codes. That can range from accumulation of tires, you know, mattresses, you eat brush, you know, you, you name it. We handle the junk vehicles, you know, everything, <laughs> everything. Else. So we have little different hats that we that we wear. And, and our goal is to, you know, have the city, uh, you know, the uh, citizen come into compliance, uh, working with other city staff, um, 
uh, you know, uh, maybe the roll-offs. We hit up uh, also um, areas where we drop off uh, roll-offs. I think up to six in some areas, depending on how, how big the area is. And then with the court officer, now what they do is uh, not only just drop off the flyer, but they will also um, address the violations. So any violations they see out there, uh, they're to address that and also um, give them the flyer of the, with the roll-off for free. So it's also a solution for them uh, to, to you know, come into compliance. So we're going to talk about the missile code of ordinances, uh, which is one of them is uh, health violations with the lots. Uh, we've seen the overgrown, right, trash and dumping, you know, thrown on there. We, you know, nobody wants to uh, deal with it. So it's easy to just throw it, you know, on somebody else's property. So we'll address those. The legal dumping, like I mentioned, the accumulation, accumulation of stagnant water, right? It's been kind of dry lately, but we know the last one was the hurricane. We were pretty, well, Vector was pretty busy uh, with the hurricane. And we, I think, like two different times, we um, uh, sprayed the city. And um, so, yeah, that was our busiest time. So I think... Hurricane season's coming up next, <laughs> besides the freeze and pandemic, all this stuff. So we got to prepare for, for that too. Uh, mentioned before, uh, da dead and damaged trees. Uh, so if you see any, like I said, you take a picture with the app and uh, download it, send it to us, and, and they'll, a officer will go and assess that too and, and give it to the owner to come into compliance. Uh, the weedy lots, like I mentioned, uh, meaning and in, in including all rank of, uh, and uncultivated vegetation, grass or plant matter which has grown uh, to more than 15 inches uh, in height uh, and which regardless of height is uh, liable to become an wholesome or decaying mass of harboring space uh, for mosquitoes and vermin. Um, such lots, sorry, I wear glasses and I sometimes it. Uh, <laughs> such of, uh, slots uh, or parcels of real estate shall be held to include all lots or parcels of real estate at line and being uh, adjacent to abutting or extending beyond the property line of any such lots or parcels of real estate to the center lines of adjacent or abutting uh, streets or alleys. So that's going to mean, you know, anything from the uh, from the front to the back to the side. Of course, you know, half the half the alley too. Um, like nobody wants to live next to that, right? You know, and uh, like it says here, mosquitoes and snakes and spiders and everything. So when it's over 48 inches already, uh, during state law, we don't have to notify the owner. We're just going to go out there and, and abate it. So we'll send a contractor, you know, to, to cut all that and clean, and then we'll send, of course, the owner uh, the bill. The illegal dumping accumulation materials uh, <clears throat> so it should be unlawful for the owner of any lot, building, house, establishment, or premises in the city to allow or permit any uh, carry-on filth or any other impure or a wholesome matter of any kind to accumulate or remain thereon. Waste products, or for a pollu polluting material, scents, chemicals, li uh, liquor, brines, garbage, rubbish, refuse, uh, waste building materials, used tires or other waste of any kind may not be stored, deposited or deposed in any manner that may cause the population of the surrounding land the contamination of groundwater, surface water, or the beating insect or rodents. As I mentioned before, you want, you, nobody wants to live next to that, so here comes the, the possums, right, and all this other stuff. They start accumulating under, under and hiding, and, and uh, I've I seen where, um, where it's overgrown. I've seen the contractor. I just happened to be parked there, and I just happened to see the, a contractor, you know, baiting the property, and what, you know, he has a big old machine, right, that he's riding, and, and what I see, I start seeing all the rats you know, running out, <laughs> you know, because they, they just gather, you know, and of course somebody, like I said, wants to live next to that. Accumulation of stagnant water. Um, mosquitoes are very um, easy to breed, you know, even just a little bit of water. Uh, the, of course, the female makes a, a lot of eggs and it comes on. They just love, they love my blood. Um, so we got to be careful on that. If you see anything, um, you can just tip it over, you know, stuff like that. You don't want to the holes are places where water may accumulate and become stagnant or unlawful within the city of McAllen. In conjunction with the nuisance, and this is the possibility of mosquito breeding and infestation within the area. The same thing for, for swimming pools. Unfortunately, we've had to take cases to court for, for the swimming pool also because the owner just refuses to, you know, to come into compliance. And of course, our job is about safety, health, and welfare. And um, so, you know, it's just we want people to come into compliance to avoid you know, the mosquito breeding. Dead trees, lots on which dead or damaged trees exist 
that may pose a serious threat to property or life on such lot, an adjacent lot or an adjacent public right of way, and unlawful within the city of McAllen. Commercial property should contact the planning department prior to any tree of removal. We know because of that, and some trees are protected, so it's best for them to, um, you know, get with the planning to, uh, you know, get that permission. I know when I worked in San Antonio, this owner wanted to cut one of the one of the trees, and the city said, "If you cut that tree, we're going to fine you thirty thousand uh, dollars." So yeah, they don't, then they're not going to play that. So he was like, "Okay," I was like, "No, I don't want to. I'm not going to do it after all." So the reason for that is because for the safety, in case of tree branch falls, you know, when you're on you or something you're walking by and, and we look out for that so if you see any trees that are decaying uh, take a picture of it with your new app and just you know send it in to us too the zoning violations will be like front yard parking and the reason for that we don't want to just kill the grass and we do have an ordinance in the landscaping uh, plus you know you don't want the oil and all that stuff you know fall into the the grass so and the oversized vehicles you know some some streets in some areas are are small so if you have a big old trailer, you know, yeah, we get the complaints that, hey, I can't pass through because these trailers are, are parked here. Um, the illegal signs, we know it gets kind of like very annoying when these signs, and of course everybody wants to make, uh, have their business known and stuff like that, but there are ordinances to, to come into, you know, compliance with the signs. And the same for garage sales. Um, everybody, like I said, wants to make money and stuff, but you do have to have a permit uh, for that. And the noise complaints, uh, then really the night person gets those complaints from, um, um, it could be from uh, the vendor, right, the food vendor having the music on too loud and, and um, you know, and then we get it, uh, say I got to go to work in the morning, so when they call that number, the 1900, uh, the court the officer goes out there, uh, you know, they are usually pretty good at just lowering it down or writing no or something, you know, and then they, they um, you know, lower it down. The smoking violations, uh, we all know it's 10 feet from the door. Uh, we cited a lot when the uh, when we got real heavy with the COVID inspections at night, we would go out there and, and uh, you know, they had some, you know, owners where uh, <laughs> they see me walk in, of course, but the, the other guys, and, and, and he's telling the people, hey, hey, put your cigarette out. You know, right in front of me, <laughs> just like, you know, and I, there's, uh, I literally have pictures of like 12 butts on the floor, you know, and, and he says, I've been trying, I've been telling them, and I said, sir, you've been telling them, you know, you won't have all these butts on the floor, so, and, and then, you know, because we were on a fire, and then, of course, a secondhand smoke, and, you know, we got to think of, of all that, so, and, of course, we take our photos because of, you know, the evidence for, for, the, for the prosecutor. The short-term rentals, and I think uh, Caesar Moore mainly handles, you know, uh, uh, on that one. Um, it, it's good because people want to rent here right in McAllen for the weekend or something like that. So, As I mentioned, we had some photos for the, the front yard parking. Uh, like I said before, we didn't want to like oil and all that stuff. It starts after a while, right? Marking, making the markings like you kind of see on that one. So what they'll do is they'll tag it. They'll tag it and, and they have the 20 hours. Or they can just give a citation to, to or citation warning to, to move it. Um, why? Do the people park like that is because you know sometimes you have multiple cars and and uh, they'll use the excuse of why well, don't want my car hit you know on the street and and uh, but you know there's always a, 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 a for a solution or something so we'll offer them hey you can you know depending on depending on big how uh, their yard is we'll offer uh, sorry he's talking to me <laughs> um, you know coming to clients of you know they can put cement and stuff like that of course getting a permit so I mentioned before the oversized vehicles. Uh, we had one the other night where um, the gentleman had two 18-wheelers and he was power washing, you know, his engine and all that stuff. You know, that's not that's a big, big no-no. So he, you know, after the court officer went out there and uh, he then he, you know, they'll say okay, they'll explain to him everything and then they'll say okay and then they end up moving it. So you know, and it'll be no truck driver. My little brother's a truck driver and they go all over the state, but um, yeah, they can't you know have it in the residential area. Uh, legal signs. Um, sometimes we'll get calls also for, um, you know, if it's blocking the the oncoming, you know, on, oncoming traffic. So um, anything without a permit will be uh, illegal. Same. Oh, the garage sales. Uh, can you sell new items at a garage sale? Yes or no? Who thinks yes? Yeah. You can? <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed to sell new items at a garage sale. 
Yeah, it's, it's got to be, uh, uh, you know, open. <laughs> and I was one lady, there's one lady, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like, you can change my answer. <laughs> yeah, you can't sell new items at a, at a grad sale. Uh, the noise complaints, like I mentioned before, um, we've had the noise uh, you know, complaints coming in and the officer will, will go out there to, to address it. And sometimes they, they, they won't, um, they won't find anything and they'll take a, I'll ask them to take a video, you know, and uh, there's no noise, you know, so they'll send it through the email and show, and it will show, show that there's no noise. And, and uh, smoking ordinance, like I mentioned before, but um, you know, 10 feet, you know, away from the door. Uh, Short-term rentals are uh, approved by City Commission on September 25th, 2017, and STR shall include a residential dwelling unit and accessory building used as a short-term vacation rental of any period less than 30 consecutive days. Registration, inspection, and permitting with health and code enforcement. One-time application fee of $50 uh, for as long as uh, same owner. Code enforcement inspection, one smoke detector, one evacuation map owner must pay hotel capacity taxes to city on a monthly basis. Any questions for RC? Yeah. <laughs> so what's considered new items in your It's going to be packaged and what if it's open? If it's packaged, then it's... Do you put it it's open? Yeah, they can they can open you it. You know, yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Is that a question? You're sitting up for the garage sale. And and as far as the court officer when you're dressing, you can't say, um, "Oh, it looks nice," because they'll say, "Well, I'll save it for you. you. Just come back." And I'm like, "No, we can't. <laughs> do that. You know, we can't can't do that." <laughs> Any uh, next? The, the, uh, the short-term rentals, the Airbnbs or something like that, or with the mm -hmm. And like I said, that's great that we have that because that's, a, you know, uh, is a good city to, to visit. Really what we don't want for that is for someone to take a single family home and decide to rent one unit, one unit, one unit. We, we have encountered that scenario. Uh, we have encountered that scenario and <coughs> We, we, we have uh, encountered that scenario where uh, for short-term rem rentals, Airbnbs, uh, where the property owner essentially decides to uh, subdivide, like rent one room to a client, another room to a client. It is for a single family uh, uh, neighborhood and you can't do that. And the, the rationale behind the permit is to make sure people don't do that. Uh, I guess it, it, it erodes the integrity of, of the zoning of the single family neighborhood, so. So we ha have had cases where we had to take them to court and say, you can't do that. You know, it's a single family uh, neighborhood. Okay, uh, next we'll have affordable homes of South Texas. The presentation. Uh, my name is Ivan Nordhausen and this is Eddie. We worked with the uh, Rehabilitation Department and Construction Department there at Affordable Homes. Um, I've been there for almost eight years. I think Eddie's been there for what, five years? Four years. So it's, uh, this essentially is a program that we have there at, the, at, the, uh, at Affordable Homes where we rehab rehabilitate uh, basically elderly and or disabled families or individuals that are property owners in McAllen. Um, some of the stuff that we're doing, you know, it's essentially we'll go in there and inspect the property and see where it's at in terms of the building code. Um, you know, uh, applicants must be uh, free of any liens and have a cl uh, clear title of the property. Uh, uh, taxes have to be current. That's another another requirement. Uh, of course, I mentioned elderly and or disabled uh, and then also the low income guidelines. I mean, we typically targeting the uh, low to moderate income families. 
So like in a family of four, I think you're looking at 42,000 or below as a household, total household income. Uh, this is kind of some of the examples of what we're doing. Uh, uh, we, when we do the inspection, we do a thorough inspection of the property and, and you know, deem those things that are priority to, to address. And a lot of times uh, uh, these property owners, elderly, they're, they're in a, a wheelchair or walkers. So it's a, a little challenging for them to get around. So uh, for this example right here, uh, we modified their bathroom to come to ADA. Uh, ADA is very, very uh, strict, so uh, sometimes we get as close as we can to it uh, within a five, mi uh, five, uh, five foot radius, for example, f inside the bathroom so they can swivel around and get, get to, the, uh, to the bathroom as they, as they move around. Um, go to the next one. Just another example where we removed the, the tub and included like a walk-in shower. Uh, it's, it's got a, uh, uh, one of the, one of the uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, a sitting area. Go to the next one. Um, so the other part is the replacement. So we do the rehabilitation where we fix up the home or remodel the home to bring it up to code. And the other thing is the replacement. We call the re replacement program is, is a short name for it. But uh, the, the before there in this particular case, uh, you know, several substandard items in, in the house. I mean, uh, this particular uh, elderly uh, gentleman was living and he's got rodents going in and whatnot. So after the inspection, you know, we deemed it uninhabitable. Uh, he did qualify for a replacement, which is a, a, a brand new home. It's 85% uh, of it is, is through a grant assistance and 15% is, is a small loan that is attached to the, to the, to the, uh, to the package. Uh, but alongside with code, uh, code enforcement, you know, kind of partner up in this and uh, they provide the, uh, the containers, the roll-off containers, and we'll do the demolition, uh, clear the site. Uh, you know, uh, our contractor will go in there and, and, and clear it and make sure that there's enough fill dirt for the, pr for the new project. So on the right is, a, is, a, is a new, the new structure there, which is five-star energy rated. I mean, it's got everything. It's on foundation slab. It's got the AC unit, everything, uh, everything's ADA, the walls, the, the, the doors are the 36 inch, so it's tailored to that, you know, elderly uh, uh, or, or disabled uh, uh, property owner. Just some more pictures of, of the interior, some of the stuff that we're doing. Uh, our contractors are procured, they go through a procurement process every year. So uh, we just don't get, you know, uh, a deal down the street or, you know, the uncle down the street, right, to do the job. These guys, uh, they are, they're all licensed. They've got their, their uh, reputation and, and everything, uh, permitting and, and everything in line. Uh, it's just another rear kind of a, that one's facing north. It's just another example of, you know, what it looks like through the back. Uh, these homes range in the replacements uh, range from a thousand, uh, actually no, like 900 square feet to about almost 1,200 square feet, just depending on the family size. Uh, some of these elderly uh, property owners will have like a, a daughter, you know, or a caretaker there that's also a provider, so, you know, we have to accommodate the, the family size. Uh, there's also some loans that we offer. Uh, you know, those range uh, between ten to twenty-five thousand, and those are on a on a on a low interest payback. Uh, of course, it, it, same thing pertains to that the, the rules, clear title, taxes current. Um, uh, what else I can see? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, we we have a list of rehabilitation contractors. So not only are we a contractor as affordable homes building homes because our main source of income is the brick homes, right? But this, is, this project is, is, a, is a rehabilitation project. So uh, uh, we, you know, we also have a list of, of these rehab contractors that are procured. They serve as the general contractor to take on the work. Uh, just another example of a rehab loan. This was, uh, I believe, a widow to a veteran. She applied and she got assistance through us to repair her roof. You can go to the next one. Uh, just some other examples of, you know, replacing uh, flooring and, 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 and ceiling. So in a nutshell, that's kind of what we do. We've been doing it for a while. Uh, we've got a, 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 a 
substantial waiting list for, for people that need assistance. Uh, sometimes, you know, we help 10 people a year. Sometimes we're at 20. It just depends. So uh, half of the projects are rehabs, which are the remodels, and the other half are the complete teardowns and replace uh, with a new home. Uh, there's our contact information if y'all have any other questions or anything. Uh, our cards are in the back. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Norma Yado. I am the building official uh, for the city of McAllen. Uh, we're not as fancy as the previous uh, presenters. We don't have a PowerPoint. <laughs> we were at the last minute. Oh, we do have one. No, I don't think we have one. Uh, uh, but the building permits and inspections department plays a key role in the development process by effectively protecting the health, safety, and public welfare of the community. Our department is comprised of three divisions, the plan review, the permitting, and the inspections. In addition to protecting the health, safety, and public welfare throughout regulation of construction in the city of McAllen, the department seeks to provide an effective and efficient permitting and inspection process that supports city growth and economic development. What we're gonna go over, which is uh, John, he's our supervisor for the plans examiners, and I also have Mr. Robert Rodriguez. He is the supervisor for the building inspectors. We will be going over the overview of our department and our functions. If, if an owner or a contractor wants to build in the city of McAllen to do additions or any type of remodeling, they're needing to apply for a building permit. Uh, and this is going, I mean, if you're gonna be painting or you're gonna be doing tiling or cabinet work, uh, or any type of cosmetic when you're doing millwork, and when I'm saying millwork for those, it's like your baseboards, you don't have to obtain a building permit. However, any other work having to do with electrical, plumbing, and mechanical, that mechanical meaning your air, your air conditioning, you do need to obtain a permit. Even a water heater. I know that we have a lot of, of residents that um, don't think a water heater, they just go to Home Depot or Lowe and buy a water heater or have a Lowe's or Home Depot install it, that needs to be uh, permitted. Also, when you're installing a fan or any light fixtures, since you, uh, the homeowner is working with electrical, that needs to be, a uh, permit does need to be obtained uh, for that type of work. We do issue homeowner's permit, even though, um, I don't know if I mentioned, uh, your electrician, your plumber and your AC contractor, they do need to be licensed through the, uh, through the state. And then they need to register with the city with, uh, in our office. Even though all those uh, trades require a licensed individual to take out a permit in the state of Texas since you know, you're king of your home, uh, the homeowner is allowed, we do allow the homeowners to obtain uh, permits for those, that type of work. Another question that we do get that we do have and we do have a lot of storage rooms throughout the city uh, a permit's not required if the storage room is less than 200 square feet if it goes beyond or in this case it would be 199 square feet if it's 200 and above then a building permit is required however even though a building permit's not required you do need to obtain or you do need to respect your setbacks or easements setbacks meaning that uh, the planning department uh, regulates how many feet you're needing to leave from your property line to any structure within the property. So you do need to maintain those setbacks even though you know, you're not required a permit. Once you encroach into the setbacks or an easement, and an easement is a piece of property that has been dedicated for utility lines, meaning your cable, your electrical, uh, any utility lines that run through there, that is what an easement is, that uh, portion of property. Once you want to encroach into that, then you're having to go through a process through the planning department, but they can probably tell you, you can probably call the planning department, they can probably tell you that process. And that's when a building permit, even though that structure is less than 
less than 200 square feet, you will be required a building permit. Uh, now, if you do not get your building permit, then we also do enforcement just like code enforcement, but we only do construction. Anything that has not been taken out, any permits that have not been taken out for any type of construction, be it interior remodeling or uh, outside or any additions, then we do do that enforcement also. We do issue a citation and you have to go through the judicial process. Uh, and we also, they can report through the 311, you just take a picture and then report it to us. Um, we're in, we're working towards providing the enforcement services on Saturdays also because a lot of people are weekend warriors and that's when most of the construction without permit is done. So we're looking into incorporating, uh, you know, having an employee or a building inspector also work on the weekends. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. John Gutierrez. He is our supervisor for the plans examiners and he then he'll tell you the process for a, uh, applying for a building permit. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Gutierrez and I'm the supervisor for the plans examiners, City of McKellen. Uh, and these forms uh, that uh, Ms. Norma Yala was talking about our building official uh, applications, you can get them uh, online at our McAllen website. So if you go to, of course, the www.mcallen.net website and go to our popular links, uh, you get this you get this screen here. And as you can see, there is uh, several several links that you could click on. Ours would be mostly the the building application process and plan review. So pretty much from here from here down is ours. Uh, and there is a, an application like uh, right here, we click on commercial application. This is the application that you can download. And it looks harder than, it looks, it's easier than, than, it, than it looks. It looks like there's a lot of blanks or nothing, but basically it's your, your information as an applicant, an owner, and we just wanna know the square footage, what is the scope of work you're doing, the existing uh, lot. This is a commercial application. So with commercial applications, of course, uh, generally you have a, uh, uh, a general contractor that's been doing this before, and uh, you usually get a, an, an architect and engineers involved in this. Uh, so they pretty much have all the documents uh, done professionally, you could say, uh, on commercial sites. But we also accept uh, maybe it's a, just a remodel that, uh, uh, a local uh, owner is doing and said, hey, I'm just remodeling my my building or my, my office and all that. And we, we do accept drawings if as long as they're, you don't require to have something engineered, uh, something structurally or, or uh, MEPs, which are mechanical and electrical plumbing uh, drawings, we'll accept drawings that, that can be done by hand. Um, so that's our that's our commercial. And it has a lot of information here on, on, uh, on, the, on the website. Our residential application is also uh, located here and you can also download that. Uh, and it's very similar to the building application and, for, and ask for the same things, the applicant, the owner's name, the project information, and of course you sign and date it. Uh, and this application we use to, to uh, process the documents. Uh, what's, what's neat about uh, this is, we accept just uh, the application and all documents through our department, through the Building Permits Inspections Department, and all the rest of the departments that have to review it, review it simultaneously, because we, we have a software product uh, program called Acela, and so we can download all these documents and fire department, public works, uh, planning, engineering, everybody gets to review it simultaneously without us having to, like before, take it to one department, they finish, and they go on to the other, to the other. So all the building permit applications get assigned a number, and that's how we track it. So just for record. And uh, what else do we have? We have other residential applications. Uh, we also have online permits. Those online permits, uh, your mechanical, plumber, an electrician can get their permits online. So that's available to them. Um, also, uh, we have, um, what else? Plan review. 
process here. And this tells you a little bit of how the plan review uh, works. So we ask for uh, a site plan, we ask for a floor plan, so that way we can determine if uh, what you're turning in meets code. Uh, we go into a little bit more detail. Uh, we have code books that we can reference. And so once we, we've uh, approved your permit, then we let you know, hey, it's ready to be picked up. Here's your fee, start your process, and then begins the, the inspection process. And for that, uh, we'll have Mr. Robert Rodriguez, which is a supervisor, will tell you a little bit more about that. So it's a lot easier than you, than, than, you, than you think to apply for it. It seems harder. Many people are hesitant. They think they, they don't want to get a permit because, oh, it's so hard. I'm gonna, they're going to ask me for this or that. You know, it's very simple. And we're there to help. So, I mean, just walk in, and we're always helpful to help you out with filling out the application and even to help you out with maybe you have difficulty in drawing something. We can, we can kind of guide you to that. Okay, so thank you very much. I'll hand it over to Mr. Robert Rodriguez and uh, he'll tell you the rest. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, John. Appreciate that. Um, folks, uh, my name is Robert Rodriguez. I'm with the Building Inspections Department. I'm the supervisor for our building inspectors. And uh, I mean, just to touch bases on a couple of things that, that we'll be discussing today or this evening uh, is our inspection process. Once you get you know, the building permits, submit all the, you know, required documents and, and you know, get past John, <laughs> then you get to me. So uh, after that, then pretty much, you know, we send out our inspectors, go do inspections, rough and plumbing, sewers, uh, temporary poles. I mean, it, the, the list goes on, you know, and I know affordable homes of South Texas, I mean, they're, they're pretty familiar with us. I think they talk to us every single day. But um, I mean, aside from that, I mean, we, uh, let's, let's go down the list right here right quick. So some of our most common inspections, uh, we have our electrical, electrical, which is temporary pole, whatever they're in the construction, anybody's in the construction for the, for the beginning part of it. You, hear, you have your electricians, plumbers, anybody that pretty much needs electrical power to their equipment, you know, the contractor usually ends up, you know, pulling one of these permits for them. So that way it, make, it makes it that much easier as opposed to using a, a portable power plant. Um, it, it just helps them out a lot. Okay, then the next one we have is our rough and plumbing inspections. At this point, you know, we check setbacks, we check uh, property lines, pretty much all the documentation that was submitted firsthand with uh, Mr. Gutierrez and the plan examiners, then we just go back and verify that. Make sure that everything is still as proposed and we keep on checking all the uh, setback string lines. Uh, make sure that your uh, rough and plumbing is filled with, uh, with water so we can make sure there's no, no leaks in the system. Uh, then we keep on moving forward to our foundation inspection seal. So at that point, you know, we verify elevations, make sure that everything's still uh, in compliance with the, um, you know, city drainage, uh, things of that sort. Also, uh, make sure the steel is, is correct, make sure that you have all your required uh, depths and widths, things like that for single, two-story houses, things like that. Um, and then just keep on moving forward. We have our framing, which framing is, is usually encompasses, you know, the electrical, you know, plumbing, uh, we have infiltration, building envelopes, things like that. It's pretty much we, we take a look at everything in a, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell right there. So when we're going, we're making sure that, you know, you have water test pressure, your electrical is okay. Uh, make sure that all the wiring is going where it's supposed to be, that it's not branched into other areas that it's not supposed to. Uh, check for backflow, I mean, and, and the list goes on and on. I mean, I know it's a lot of information, but I mean, it is something that we do look for. And, you know, whenever we make our, our list at the end of the day for inspections and things like that, uh, if you have any questions, by all means, you can always call us. We're more than happy to help out. Uh, and if you have any other questions, we will try to get you an answer. Uh, so then we keep on moving. Then we have our installation. The, even prior to that, you do submit some documentation with Mr. Gutierrez and the plans examiners. And then from there, we pretty much just verify that that's still in compliance. Um, I know installation, it's, it's something that you know, might not seem too, too pertinent at the moment, but when it gets, you know, when the winter comes and, and the heating season comes and you see that bill go, you know, skyrocket, things like that, I mean, it's super important for us to have. <laughs> uh, next one is, um, and the next one is actually more for, for commercial, but it is a, a, an inspection that we do conduct uh, more along the commercial side here for those of us that are, that are dealing more with those projects. Uh, we go check the, the areas above the ceiling, we make sure that your plumbing is still correct, you can add any supports, things like that you have for framing. Uh, we make sure that that's still there and there's, there's no issues there. If there is something there that we will point out to you, 
and then we'll put it on notes as well as far as the inspection goes. Um, infiltration, that's after you already drywalled your whole house, your interior interior walls, things like that. So then um, we go and make sure that's in order. There's something missing, you know, we'll point it out to you. And then after that, we'll ask you to call it in or, or if not, then you're okay to go to the next process. Then uh, you're, you're almost there. <laughs> So we have a sewer line, sewer line connection pretty much. Of course, your house has to have some sort of drainage before you sewer. So we just go ahead and check that and make sure that it's draining, flowing properly. Also with the city of McAllen, we do require a two-way clean out at your property line, and that's pretty much for maintenance and, and cleaning, things like that. Um, and then your final inspection. Final inspection, we go, we take a look at everything in general, make sure that you have your, you know, all your permits are still, it went away. <laughs> But uh, we just go and make sure that everything is complete, make sure that everything that you applied for is still there, make sure that everything that was originally permitted is there, make sure if there's you know, anything else that was added, anything extra, but of course we'll address it at that time. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you your list at the end of that, uh, see if there's anything pending. Now, we also have uh, remote video inspections. And for that, uh, as part of the City of McAllen's Progressive E-Service is an ongoing effort to protect the health and safety of residents, contractors and employees. The city launched a program to conduct live remote video inspections. Uh, the purpose of the remote video inspections program is to provide an alternative to on-site inspections. And as you can tell, for, due to COVID and things like that, I mean, we just explore different venues and things like that. I know uh, our director was, you know, uh, pretty much spearheaded that, that uh, program for us. Now, um, with that being said, I mean, we do have several different options for installations. We can always, you know, take you on a tour of the, of the house, things like that. And then we'll kind of point out things and see like, okay, there's installation that's pending on one side and then we'll take a look at that. And then we'll, you know, we'll kind of ask you to pan around the areas and, you know, we'll pretty much make a determination from there. Again. So, I mean, the inspector is very helpful. I mean, we're, we're very helpful. And if it's something where we got to actually go out into the field, I mean, we'll let you know right then and there. Again. But I mean, for the most part, we usually try to take care of it like that so that we can help you keep you safe, keep us safe, and then keep everybody rolling. Um, and I think, oh, and to request an inspection, yeah, and I'll just kind of read this right here. Uh, for commercial residential permits, inspections may be requested by the applicant or representative by calling 956-681-1320 or visiting our online permit portal after the building permit has been issued. The requester will need to provide the permit number, address, type of inspection, and contact information. If you request an inspection prior to 7 a.m., the inspection will be conducted that morning. If the request is made before 12 p.m., the inspection will be conducted that afternoon. Um, and folks? <laughs> yeah, I was like, you want to say something? Huh? And I'll pass it over to Ms. Yala. I'll close it up. Uh, once all of this process has gone through, uh, then we'll issue a certificate of occupancy. Uh, what it means is that your um, your building has complied with all our requirements, and some most of the times this is used for new construction, uh, especially when there is a financial institute involved that they can present to, to them. Um, I also was going to mention on the remote inspections. Uh, there are only certain. I mean, there's some inspections that. Uh, we will conduct, we don't conduct all the ones that, uh, that Mr. Rodriguez mentioned for the reason that there's some, especially like the framing, that it's a little bit more detailed, that that we do need to go on site and make sure that those items have been addressed. So, uh, but the majority are available through the remote inspection. Uh, that is a fairly new program due to COVID-19 that we decided to protect, you know, our citizens and, as well as our employees. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, please call us. I um, mean, we're there. We're um, if there's any questions during your construction that is, you know, especially homeowners that do not understand, we will walk the homeowner through the process. Uh, um, I don't know if there's any questions that you might have for us. Uh, we're here to answer any of the questions. No? I have a question. With yes. regards to the number of inspectors, does every home that's built in a new subdivision get inspected? Every single home that's in the city of McAllen does get inspected. If, it's, if they're permitted, of course. Yeah, you know. of course it's yes. permitted. So I yes. guess I'm referring to like new construction. Yes. yes, yes, every new construction that's going. Uh, we were just doing uh, a study most recently, uh, residential on our plan review, just when um, I think we're at 50, 
from last year to this year, even though it's COVID, construction has not stopped. Uh, our commercial went up for 15%, uh, which is an overall of about 33% increase on us reviewing permits as well as uh, issuing those permits. So even though you would think that we were in the middle of a pan uh, pandemic, we were still going, uh, the construction did not stop. No. And that's the reason, that was one of the reasons that we decided, okay, to protect everybody, you know, let's try to do, uh, be more innovative as to what we can do for the public, uh, you know, so they can feel safe. Um, and it's very easy. I mean, you just get your phone, uh, you request it, you would still go through the same request. However, uh, the inspector will make contact with uh, the person that's requesting the inspection and then we'll set up a time whenever it's, uh, co it's convenient for them to be at site because we do need someone at site for them to do those inspections. Do you anticipate so, continuing that? Yes, sir. Yes, we do. And this is just an alternative. It doesn't have to be, you know, through the video, but, uh, you know, we're looking at options as to incorporate the other inspections that we still haven't incorporated. But that's more geared towards uh, the ones that do take advantage of that service uh, are the homeowners, are the homeowners, yeah. The, uh, commercial, uh, those are more complex projects that at times we do need to be there on site. Mm. Uh, another thing that I did forget to mention, we do have for those that want to do commercial uh, on existing buildings uh, where there's spaces and you want to lease them out, we do what we, what we call the building occupancy. Mostly everybody knows it as a miscellaneous inspection, but that's a courtesy inspection that we provide at no fee for uh, tenants that are going into existing buildings. Uh, and we just go, uh, we do coordinate it with other departments. Um, health department, if it's a restaurant and there's food involved, it would be the health department, fire department, the utilities, pre-treatment. So we coordinate uh, this inspection. There are set times, There's, they're done twice uh, a day. It's at 11 at three. And we coordinate it with uh, those departments so like that all the departments can be there at the same time. And at that time, we provide um, all the requirements. And this is just maintained. It's not that we're gonna throw the book at them and say, oh, okay, you're gonna have to you know, retroact everything. We just say, no, just maintain. Uh, and if a building permit is required, then we'll guide them through the, the building permit process. But that is an inspection that we do free of charge. It's just a courtesy inspection that we do have for uh, our citizens that want to uh, do business here in the city of McAllen. How do you monitor or keep track of and follow up with permits that are never closed? That is something. A lot of people are like, everything's done, it works fine. Mm -hmm. why, why bother even going and close it? Oh, well, uh, that most recently uh, we have been addressing. I just recently became the, the building official. Uh, and that is something that we just currently started addressing. When they do come, uh, we do advise them. Uh, that is part of their condition that before they do occupy a building, uh, they do need to final the permit. Um, when a homeowner comes in and they do an addition, and we just had it, uh, we've had several cases now that they want to do another project, and we tell them, no, you're needing to renew your permit. Uh, before, we would just set it aside, uh, and, and they weren't being finaled. Now we are asking them to be finaled. We are following up on them, most, but that is something most recently that we just incorporated, that we're following up. Uh, we're calling the contractors that you know, be it contractor or homeowner, that we're calling them and letting them know your permit has expired. Uh, and then we will follow up with the building inspectors. They will follow up to see if the project, uh, you know, was initiated. And if so, then we may contact. If it's not, then we start closing those permits. But that is something that we currently just uh, incorporated. Does that happen more often with uh, remodel? Okay. Yes, it happens more. It's mostly the homeowners that uh, commercial buildings uh, are, you know, those they do. Uh, it might take a couple of years on some of uh, the commercials, might take a couple of years because of the project being, uh, it's more complex of a project. But yes, we do have that, that the homeowners at times, I mean, they don't have a full understanding uh, and they're the ones that are acting as the general contractors. Those are the ones that we have been addressing most lately. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do do enforcements. Uh, that's where we find out. I know that we have several cases, especially those infamous uh, carports that are so close to, to uh, the property lines. And we do have uh, issues with those where 
when we do get rained, you know, it goes onto the property or the neighbor's property. So we're addressing all of that, uh, you know, as we're going through uh, our permits, uh, you know, we are every year or every month we go through all of our permits to see what has expired and that's how we're addressing each and uh, that has not been final, all those permits that are expired. Even though they're expired, they are allowed. I know that uh, one of the questions would be, you know, how uh, the permit, you know, uh, when does it expire? The permit is good for a year. Every single permit is good for a year. Uh, but not only do we have residential and, uh, and commercial, we have swimming pools, we have signs, we have cell towers, uh, help me, I don't know, uh, for to move a home, to demolish a home. Uh, we do have other permits, but those are the most common permits that we deal with, the residential and commercial. But there are other variety of permits that we do uh, also uh, review. So, but in the future, if you guys have any questions, you, you guys can reach us. Our number is 681-1300. We do have a little flyer of uh, overview uh, and our number's there. You can contact us um, and or email us also. We, you know, we also do uh, request, you can request your inspection, like uh, Mr. Rodriguez was saying, uh, through the phone, through our recording system, or you can do it online. So, thank you guys. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was a great presentation. I'm gonna have to call my brother when I get home and let him know we were in violation when he installed the ceiling fan. <laughs> Thank you for the information. So I'm Chris Lash. I'm the coordinator for Keep McAllen Beautiful. And I'm here to just talk a little bit about some of the projects that we do with our program. Uh, go ahead, Cesar. So uh, Project Clean Neighborhoods. This is a great project that we offer the city. and. Um, it's a great opportunity for residents who have a cleanup in their neighborhood, and there are three ways that they, that, that can happen, either through the city commissioners bringing it into their district, uh, or a citizen themselves calling and applying, wanting the cleanup, or also with a task force. Uh, a couple of years ago, we formed a task force because we realized that in certain neighborhoods, there was a lot of problems with illegal dumping. And so we came together as a task force with code and health enforcement, recycling, sanitation collection, brush collection. And, you know, we just thought, okay, what's the best way to approach this? And so with the help of code and health enforcement, we identified those areas that had a lot of illegal dumping. And so we bring cleanups, especially to those areas with the help of the code enforcement officers who will uh, give a flyer to each uh, home when we're doing the cleanup. And we also send postcards to them. And again, this is very specifically targeted to those neighborhoods that have a lot of illegal dumping. Next slide, please. So the Arbor Day celebration, um, as you all know, the pandemic was really bad. And so, you know, I'm using pictures because I want happy thoughts. And we're looking forward to March 2022 when we can go back to our usual event. Uh, back in 2020, uh, we gave out over 1,300 trees at that event. That is the only fundraiser we have and um, it's a great opportunity for people to come learn about trees and tree care and so it's a really important event for us and we like the community to be aware of this event. By the way, there's an APB for that character on the top left hand corner there in case you guys see him somewhere. Um, next slide please. Um, the Great American Cleanup. So because of the pandemic, this is an annual cleanup that we do. We gather in mass at the park. We won't be able to do that this way this year. So this way we're planning pocket cleanups where groups can call us and schedule a cleanup. It will be groups of 10 individuals or less. We'll provide trash bags, we'll provide the gloves, we'll provide vests 
and they can either pick an area that they want to do or we can assign one for them and so we're looking forward to starting that project it's going to run from april 5th to may 1st it's a great opportunity right now for kids that are looking for community service because i know kids right now especially with the pandemic are struggling to find projects and, f and find community service hours or places that can they can do it so um, please help us pass the word out um, if you are not familiar with our facebook page i encourage you guys to please um, like us on facebook keep mcallen beautiful so that you can stay attuned in tune to our events as they're happening next one please Paint McAllen Beautiful, that's another project that we do. We paint homes for elderly low-income residents here in McAllen. We do it all with the help of volunteers. And um, we're getting ready to do one on Saturday. Uh, and again, this is a very rewarding project because it's a very feel-good project because the elderly residents are just so ecstatic when we get done painting their home. It just looks like a brand new home to them. And so we're looking for applicants. We um, struggle with finding applicants because they seem to think that if we paint their home, we're going to own their home. And so that's something that we struggle with. and. We'd like everyone's help. If, if you are our eyes and ears, if you hear of a resident, an elderly resident who has a wood frame home and could use you know, some beautification on their home, please refer them to us so that they can apply. Next one, please. Um, adopt a park. A couple of years ago, we started a program where an individual, a business, um, you know, a group can adopt a park in McAllen. And to adopt the park, they just need to apply. It's a simple application process. And then they can come up with their own schedule. They can schedule the cleanups once a month. They, it re does require a minimum of six cleanups a year. And right now we have 13 parks adopted. Of course, with the pandemic, we kind of had to put it on hold. And we're looking forward to continuing that venture. It's been very successful successful with groups going out there and cleaning their assigned parks. They do get a sign specifically for them, specifically for the group. And so, yeah, we have uh, an adopted park back there owner is uh, Joe. Jose Esqueda and his family adopted one of our local parks. And so again, it's a great way to do it with your family, with your friends, with your church, with your school. So um, again, I'd appreciate it if you guys can just let people know about that project. Next one, please. I just wanted to show you happy faces and what it's like to have a cleanup in the parks. We do with groups, with schools and church groups. And we had a group that was a pest control company and they said, we want to clean a park. Great. So we went to McAuliffe and we did a park cleanup. Um, so next slide. So during the pandemic, one more. We, one more, yeah, there you go. We've been really busy doing this more one-on-one -on -one projects and this is our uh, public arts. We formed a public arts committee and we paint the pipes. How many of you guys have been actually able to spot a pipe, a beautifully painted pipe? A lot of you guys. So they're on the hike and bike trails along Bicentennial, along Second Street. We focused our last phase, next please, uh, on South McAllen. So next time you do take a flight, once our restrictions on COVID lift, you'll get to see heading towards the airport, beautifully painted pipes, or if you're going to the mall, you'll see them there too. And again, we do this through a committee. We do uh, put out a call for artists. They do have to apply. They do have to send um, you know, their draft designs. Some of them get accepted, some of them don't. So, uh, you know, it's a great process that we have. Um, next slide. So I just wanted, I know we don't have any board members here, but so Keep McAllen Beautiful does function with myself as a coordinator. We have only one staff member and the rest are board members. And it's a really hardworking board. It's a hands-on board. And um, so it's great that they can offer their assistance but i would be remiss in saying that we would not be able to do any of of our events or projects without the help of 
the city and city departments, public works especially, parks department, code and health. And so it's a team effort and it's great to see that all city departments come together to help with our projects and events. And the last slide please. And so we have a lot of help from, uh, from volunteers, as I mentioned. And um, pre-pandemic, uh, for 2020, we had over 10,000 hours of volunteer hours dedicated and given to our city, and that's significant. And that really means a lot to us. And so I just encourage everyone to please, you know, spread the word about our organization and encourage people to volunteer because at the end of the day, what it does is it helps our community. It helps keep our community clean. It helps beautify our community. And so if you guys have volunteered for our projects, I wanna thank you. And again, please, um, any word, anything you can do to help us out with that, I'd appreciate it. Any questions? Thank you guys so much. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Robert Trevino. I am the Renewable Resources Manager for the City of McAllen. Um, unfortunately, I do not have a PowerPoint, uh, technical issues, but I do have a flyer that we do have in the back showing about recycling and about brush schedule, which I'll be talking about. Uh, first off, on recycling, we do have a recycling center where you're able to drop off your cardboard, paper, aluminum, plastic number one and number two, metal tin. And it's open to everybody. It's not just open to Sydney McAllen residents, it's open to the whole valley. Uh, actually, right now we're working with different communities as well that are bringing the recyclables. Uh, now, staying at home due to pandemic, there's a lot more recyclables available, and we've seen an increase in that as well. Um, so do's and don'ts for McAllen residents. What do you do with your blue bin? Oh, you only put cardboard, paper, aluminum, tin, plastic one and two, and uh, glass. What you don't do, you don't put uh, like needles or uh, uh, right now there's a lot of uh, foam plates and foam cups we don't do any of that and especially food scrap that contaminates the recyclables especially the paper and the cardboard uh, we have to understand that these trucks that go pick up the recyclables uh pick up everybody's recyclables everybody's been so 10 residents are recycling properly and the last two are not well then that decontaminate the whole load and when we run it we have to understand that it's not machines that are sorting the, the recyclables it's human hands we have uh, 12 employees that actually go through all the material and whatever is recyclable they pull out and it just gets pretty nasty. We, through our Recycle Right program, this is about three, four years ago, we've seen a tremendous increase in the recyclables. Our recyclables are a lot cleaner and uh, we've seen about a 35% increase in the recycling pro process as well. So uh, we thank the residents for complying and, uh, and if you don't, well then you get a violation and you get your bin removed and plus if you get rec want to recycle trash, we'll give you an extra trash bin and you have to pay for that as well. Uh, another thing that we do have available at the recycling centers are new citizen drop-off. So now it's really easy to go and drop off anything. We have a basically like a berm where you're able to just throw everything into the roll-offs from recyclables to debris. Uh, that's open to residents. Uh, if you're not on schedule for brush pickup yet and you want to get rid of some items, you're more than welcome to come in. Uh, we're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30 and Saturdays from 8 to 12. So even on the weekends. Um, any debris you want to bring in, old sofas, old furniture, tires, uh, it's all allowed to be able to dispose there at the recycling center at no cost to the resident. Uh, we also have e-waste. So you have old computers, TVs, microwaves. You could bring all that in. Uh, they are uh, sent to our vendor where they're completely destroyed. So your data will not be shared with anybody. Um, and one of the great things now with the spring coming up and dealing with the freeze, we have compost. We have our compost facility that makes great compost and mulch products. Uh, that's available at a very, very cheap price, uh, $1.75 a bag. Uh, and we're selling it like hot tamales. It's crazy. Last year we sold over 70,000 bags and we're probably gonna hit about 100,000 this year. So it's a great product that you can use at home for your garden or for your landscaping. So on brush, uh, right now with the freeze, we have a lot of brush. And on the fly that's in the bag, there's a, the brush schedule. Uh, we have not made any special accommodations as far as changing the schedule around due to the amount of brush we're sticking to the schedule. I know we had the hurricane, we made a few changes because it was way too much. Uh, and I'll give you an example, during the hurricane, what we pick up in six months, we picked up in two, which was over 100,000 cubic yards. Uh, now with the freeze, it's a little bit less, but it's still a lot. Uh, there's not an end to this, and uh, but we're working very hard. We have our guys working 10-hour shifts, Monday through Saturday right now, 
and getting it done. Uh, so just be patient with us. We're trying to get out there and get all your brush picked up. So this will continue through the month of April as well. Um, do's and don'ts, we please, please, we just ask the residents to please uh, put it away from utilities. Uh, don't put it on top of water meters, gas meters, uh, telephone posts, cable lines. Um, we do use very heavy, big equipment. And sometimes we do try to spot it, but sometimes if you have two water meters, for example, we see one, we have an idea of a second one, our loader goes in there, and now we just pop the water line. So please just make sure to place your brush and your debris away from any utilities, away from fence lines as well, that way we don't cause any damage. Um, place it prior, the week prior to your collection, uh, the Sunday before, preferably, and that way we have the whole week of the collection to pick up your debris and your brush. If you don't, then code's gonna go after you, so watch out for them. <laughs> but please, that way we keep our city clean as well. We don't have brush and debris all over the place. I know right now with the uh, winter freeze that we just had, that's pretty hard. Everybody's taking advantage on the weekends, uh, but we're hoping the next month or so we'll be caught up as well. Um, the compostable bags, that's a great, I think we're like the only city that does it right now. Uh, we have the compostable bags, the brown bags that we call them as well, they're available to the residents. You get 20 bags, if you go pick them up at the recycling center per month, or if you pick them up at City Hall or at the community centers, you get 10 bags. So that's something that's available, and that's something that we do use. All those bags end up going to our composting facility, and they do get turned into compost and mulch. Um, brush roll-offs. So if you have a special project, uh, and it's not your, you're not on the, on the brush uh, pickup week yet, but you want to do some landscaping around your home or some trimming, we do have free brush roll-offs available. It's a first-come, 1st first serve basis. So call in, you schedule it, we'll drop it off on Friday, we'll pick it up on Monday. So that's something that's also available to the residents at no charge. Um, and that's pretty much it. Do you guys have any questions? Yes, sir. Robert, on the brush, um, I have some petitions <coughs> that it's the policy that you're supposed to put the brush normally or near where you put your bins, right? Yes, that is correct. Your, your brush and your are placed uh, where you place your black and your blue bin. Okay. Uh, next to it, uh, just again, away from utilities, mailboxes. I've heard from residents that the driver sometimes will say, put it on the street, like literally between the curb and the asphalt, right? And others yes. say, no, put it above the curb, between the curb and the sidewalk. So what actually is the policy? The, you'll put it next to the curb, not on top of your property. The problem is, the, especially if you have a sprinkler system, and most of the sprinkler systems that are along the, the right of way is a drip system. So you put it on top of, your, or your, on top of the property, when we go pick it up with our loader or a grapple, right. we'll tear up into your sprinklers. So it's best to put it along next to the curb. Okay. Again, not obstructing traffic either. And, and, uh, and away from, obviously from the sidewalk, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't want to obstruct the sidewalk either. Um, and if you do have an alley, well, you'll put it, place it in the alley as well. Right. Yes. Well, one additional issue. Even the mayor raised it. Um, the brush grapplers? Yes. Sometimes they kind of nick or <laughs> Right <laughs> into the, into the asphalt. asphalt. Uh, I say this from personal experience because we've got one recommended. Yes. And so it happens. I mean, it's no issue, but as you probably can guess, and I'm sure the engineers will tell you, over time, you know, it's, it's it deteriorates the asphalt. And get, you know, yes, we we have addressed that with our, our drivers, and we're looking actually into uh, uh, other grapple systems to uh, prevent that from happening in the future. Okay. Yeah, they get a little carried away sometimes. It tears the bag. Oh, yeah, the bags too. Yes. Especially if they sat out there a day or two in their way. Yeah, they, they do deteriorate pretty quick. That's something we're looking into as well, getting a better brown bag as well. That can last a little bit longer. Are there certain types of plastic that are easily recognizable as one or two? Or yes, sir. Uh, plastic number one would be like your clear plastic bottles, like your water bottles. And plastic number two, we wore a high density plastic, like your milk jugs, your orange juice. Uh, that's a little, the material's a little bit more thicker. Basically, the plastics that we do not recycle is like wraps. Uh, the, the the plastic that's used for like the restaurants um, to store food. Those those are more type three and type four. Those we don't use and toys. Uh, toys is more of a different type of plastic as well. That's not a number one or number two. So packaged goods. No, that we will not. That plastic is not recyclable. What about your um, grocery bags? Like the grocery bags uh, at this time we're not, they're not recyclable. Yeah, the yes, that's a little that's a little confusing, and and the thing is, we only recycle whatever we have a market for. Uh, I know during the pandemic we saw prices drop like crazy on our special on the paper. We're so blessed to be close to the border that uh, we're able to maintain demand on our products. 
So if we have a market for it, we will recycle it. Uh, unfortunately, like on bags, on plastic bags, we don't have a market for it right now, so we won't, we don't uh, recycle them. Yes, yeah. HFDM Walmart. What percentage of material you're receiving right now that is sorted to be recyclable? Uh, we're about at a 40%. Yes, yeah, so when we started Recycle Rate, we were actually about at 20%, so we're closer to a 40% right now. So, and unfortunately, due to the, the COVID, we did see a spike of more contamination. Uh, more people were at home, and we did see uh, more material come in uh, as well as contamination. That's something that was addressed already as well, and we're starting to see more recyclables. So 60% is probably the peak of that. So, Robert, if you recycle wrong, you put food products or something in the blue bin, you lose it? What <laughs> the recycle police will show up at your home now. <laughs> now we have a, one of our field service monitors. They do the they check the bins before they're picked up by our residential department. Uh, there is some type of contamination. They'll leave you a tag. That'll be the first time. Upon the second time, there's a violation. They will remove the blue bin, and then you'll get a second black bin at a ten dollar. No, I'm sorry, two dollars fifty cents a month for the black bin. So there's a way to kind of redeem yourself. Yes, after six months being on probation, you do go through a probationary period, uh, you're able to apply and do the pledge again and you're able to get a recycle bin. Short story is that there's been times in the middle of the night I asked her, like, what do you do with a pizza box? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and egg cartons, right? The, the yes. Stuff. And I will literally get out at midnight and walk out and I'm mad. <laughs> 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 and I know we, we thank you. Yes, and it's amazing. Uh, our recycling center is not that big, and we processed over 10 million pounds last year recyclables. So it's something. It's one of those operations you can't stop. Uh, if something breaks, you gotta stay later, stay late, make it going to continue the process. All right. Any questions? No, no, sir. It is. It's like every, every, almost everything is recyclable. Unfortunately, we can only recycle what we can sell. So, styrofoam. Unfortunately, uh, we do not recycle it at our recycling center. Yes, ma'am. I wasn't sure if Mr. Samora asked, but I can hear. So, when you get tagged and then they remove the blue one, they put you a black one. Yes, ma'am. Penalize you or how long? Like Six months. Well, this is the thing. Once you get your, your, your second black bin mandatory, you'll be get it. You're able to call in and we're able to withdraw it and you will get charged for it. Uh, if you see the need that you need, you'll keep it and you'll be charging, you'll be charged $12.50 a month. So it's not, it's not a permanent uh, issue, but if you, if you need, do need it, you'll be charged for it. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, you said that the food products are not recyclable. Are they recyclable? Ask it. Do we get the contract with Corpus Christi? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> We're looking forward to it, but no. Okay, uh, unfortunately, not as of, as of right now, not, nothing's happened yet. So, all right. Oh, well, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Delilah Martinez with McAllen Public Works. You have several of us here this evening. Thank you, Coach, for coordinating this. There's a lot of great information here. I think it's a great idea to do these educational sessions to get all that information out there to the public. So this is a great avenue to do that. I'm going to be talking about stormwater. Yes. Yes. Hurricane season is upon us. We're about a month and a half away. If they start the season earlier this year, they're talking about that. But who can tell me what's another four-letter word for stormwater? Rain. 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 <laughs> Sometimes we make things too complicated. Rain. Like, oh, yeah, rain. <laughs> our stormwater management program is run. We have in our drainage division about 30 individuals that oversee our storm sewer system, storm drainage system different uh, terminology for it. But believe it or not, that includes our street is part of the drainage system, your curb and gutter, all our storm drain inlets, there's different types of inlets, underground pipes, and our regional detention facilities and drainage ditches. We've got about 30 miles of drain ditches that we maintain here with the city of McAllen. So this whole system's purpose, the whole purpose is to collect stormwater, collect rain, from homes, from businesses, 
protect our homes and businesses and take it over to our watersheds. We got two watersheds, the Arroyo Colorado and Laguna Madre. Uh, part of the stormwater management program, we have a stormwater permit. So there's different requirements we have to uh, uh, deal with the state who oversees the permit. And there are also federal regulations that, with the Clean Water Act. So all this is again to protect surface water quality and that's our that's our main goal here so if anything when you leave here tonight and y'all might have already heard my soapbox on this but only rain down the drain that's the only thing that should go in there do we see everything else in there yes we do <laughs> right now with the oak trees with the freeze that we had leaves everywhere so, you know, we ask our residents, we also have to be responsible, we've got to do our part uh, to clean up all the leaves. Uh, Mr. Trevino spoke about the compostable bags. Uh, definitely do not blow everything into the street. You know, by ordinance, we do have that responsibility to uh, clean what is the right of way, okay? And uh, we do have street sweepers that go around the city probably every fourth month, quarterly. So um, unfortunately, we can't get there every day. There's about 600 miles of city streets that we maintain. So take that into double it, 1,200 gutter miles because we sweep both sides of the street. So it's a lot for our street sweepers. We've got six of them. So they're on a quadrant system. But again, we ask our residents to do their part. A couple of years ago, 2019, we implemented our watershed ordinance. So um, if y'all want some reading material tonight, it's chapter 120. <laughs> it's about 60 pages, but it deals with, you know, the development process too, what you can do when you're developing, once you've completed developing, or things at home that you need to keep an eye on. You know, illicit discharge, illicit connections, illegal dumping, anything again that is not stormwater definitely does not belong in a storm drain system. So just a couple of tips there. We try to give a uh, utility bill insert, usually in the month of September every year, just to give our residents, again, referencing our chapter 120 ordinance, what they can do at home to keep our storm drains clean. And, um, you know, one is, again, collecting grass clippings and leaves in your brown bags, uh, picking up after your pet, okay, making sure your curb and gutter is clean, you can sweep it. And it's good exercise and you're keeping your curb or gutter clean. When we get a lot of leaves or bulky waste in our inlets, of course the system can't work as it should, it gets clogged, and you usually have to get a work order over to our factory truck to come by your, your subdivision. But they are maintaining on a daily basis. Again, we have over 6,000 storm drain inlets that we keep tabs on. Again, with sweeping, but all that in combination, again, is to maintain our storm sewer system clean, free of debris, it works properly, so when hurricane season comes through, we're ready. So any questions on our system, we do have our own uh, website. You can get information on McCownPublicWorks.net, three Facebook pages, McCown Public Works, recycling, composting, and of course, KMB is part of us as well on their Facebook. But uh, our motto is, as Public Works, here to serve. So any questions y'all have, we're there, we're phone call away, uh, we're 24 seven. And uh, we love our job, yeah. but we can't do it again with the rest of the departments too. So code helps us enforce that watershed ordinance. And uh, we keep, you know, we're, it's, uh, it's all a city McCown team. But with that, I'll take any questions you might have on our system. So I was just going to add that, that uh, I think a year or two ago, uh, your department came up with a uh, rotating system throughout the city. Yes, sir. Yes. All the training stitches and stuff. Yes, sir. Making sure that we're mini uh, minimizing the amount of vegetation, the amount of growth, uh, aside from the uh, debris that just come across uh, you know, consequently as well. And uh, it's great. I've gotten good feedback. Oh, that's uh, wonderful, sir. I'm a detailed person in our committee. I won't name names aside from <laughs> myself uh, who notice these things. Uh, but as you know, anything that pretty much you know is growing in those ditches uh, has a baffle effect uh, with the yes. water flow and the current, and it just allows for more accumulation and, and then you end up you know, getting flooding or you're not using the entire facility to its maximum capacity. Correct. You know, flow. So good work on that. Okay, appreciate that, notice. sir. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're doing our best. Yes, you are. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, 
people think they can uh, drain their, their pools and the, the storm drains? Is that no, sir. That's not allowed. That would be considered an uh, illegal discharge. So there's options for that. One of them is also working with MPU to get a discharge into their sanitary shore. Okay. Uh, another one, too, that can be allowed is uh, they can water their lawn with it. Or if they want to get it tested that there's no chlorine in it and they dechlorinate it, they, it can trickle to... To the storm drain inlet but that would have to be tested so they, they got a couple options okay. <laughs> anyone else well i'll still be here after the meeting so there's any other questions i have oh. a suggestion yes sir Sebi and I can <laughs> because he and i are the kind of guys that if we see a violation we'll go up to the person and I know I've done it on multiple occasions, especially like in legal dumping. Can we be like commissioned to actually issue a citation? Did we take an oath or something? I'm being serious. Like citizens of Detroit. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Where we, they go through a certain amount of training and then we give them you know, some little temporary badge or something and just let them, yeah. I, I already I, have one. I'm talking talk to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, we can all. <laughs> okay, you are commissioned, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, we have witnesses here, so it's a done deal. Because, you know... Uh, but if you're going to write a citation, you got to call a license. Oh, yeah. you, they have to be licensed, yeah. right? That's true. That's true. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously we're all, both of us in the calendar, parallel of our city, and, you know, uh, we're, we're blessed with the board that we have because I can truly represent that everybody on the parish, they go, they're person to person, face to face. You know, if these issues are personal to us, they should be personal to everybody here, especially yes. the ones in the room, right? Um, and, and it just really irks me that there are people who just flagrantly violate it when you have the other 95% and all it takes is less than 5% to clog up a drain, uh, to, to uh, make the city unesthetically pleasing. You know, especially people dumping at the end of the street, you know, all their debris. It's like, you're doing it on a public right of way. I don't care if it's a dead end. You know, it's still a public right of way, right? So, you know, those are the things that, you know, I, I think, you know, our involvement, uh, we want to obviously be by example. But sometimes also to have a little bit of authority to say, hey, uh, you know, you need to be aware of this and you know, you're, there's going to be consequences to it. Right. So, anyway. All right. Okay. We'll do about <laughs> 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 it. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Okay, so this concludes our program for today. Thank you for all the departments that uh, contributed to our presentation. And we're going to be doing a monthly presentation that's going to be rotated around the city. Any closing remarks from our city commissioners? No, we want to thank everyone who uh, tuned in and paid attention to this because it's extremely informative, even for us who are involved in the city. And I want to thank all the departments because it really showcases how much pride we've got in the city and really the caliber and the quality of lifestyle that y'all maintain. So thank you so much. Ditto. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it really means a lot. Uh, again, everybody here in this uh, uh, building, this gym, recognize uh, how important the city is, what it means to each of us. It may not mean exactly the exact same thing, what it means to us with our families, growing up here, born and raised here, whatnot, uh, being transplanted here. But there's a lot of pride here. And, you know, I, I, I commend Commissioner Seve making time as well because he's got a young kiddo. Uh, you know, my wife also being here to be present uh, because we're behind you. We got your six because I know the level of each one of you in this room at some point in time uh, the dedication and the effort uh, that you've made, and those are the things that, at least for Commissioner Sebi and I, for sure, do not go unnoticed. We remember these things, and you can always count on us always making and attending these meetings, and we'll look forward to more in the future. Thank you again, everybody.